Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for directing us here this morning. Lord, I pray that you would just, you would awaken our heart this morning. You would awaken our heart to just want to receive what you have. And Lord, that we would be on fire for what you're doing. Lord, I pray that you would, you would help us understand what you want us to know today. Lord, I pray for fresh revelation in this house this morning. Lord, as you prepare our hearts to hear the word, I pray that you would just unravel our lives and place it in front of us so that we could know who you are even more. Lord, I want to be intentional with my passion for you. And so, Lord, I pray you would do that this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship.
be faithful to the end. He's my Savior and my healer, my redeemer and friend. He's holy, he's righteous, he'll be faithful to you till the end. He's our Savior. this morning, God, that you are holy, that you are righteous, that you are faithful to the end, God, that you are Savior, you're our healer, you're our redeemer, and our friend. Greater love has no one than this. He laid his life down for us, and he calls us his friend, and God, we just celebrate you and your love this day. We thank you that we know it. God, I pray that it would fill our hearts to overflowing, God, that we, it would go beyond ourself. God, I pray for those in this room who maybe don't know yet, haven't seen yet your faithfulness to the end, who are believing it through faith, but they haven't quite seen it yet. Lord God, I just pray that you would build up faith in this place this morning, that you are not a God who lies, but you are truthful, you are faithful, you are just, and I pray and thank you for the testimony that you're writing. We can trust you, and so God, this morning we say we trust you with everything every part of our heart, Lord God. We surrender to you, Lord. Holy, righteous, faithful to the end. Lift it up. Come on, church.
praise. Let's sing it again. Let our praise be your welcome. Let our songs be a sign. We are here for you. We are here for you. You let your breath come from heaven.
See you. 
breaks yours. Lord, help us see with compassion where you see with compassion. Let us have hearts broken for those that need our hearts broken for them. And Lord, give us the words that we would need to say in those moments. Lord, let us be responsible for what you've blessed us with. Lord, help us see the responsibility that you've called out on us when you tell us, I'm breaking your heart breaking your heart for a reason. Lord, I pray that you would give us a, a greater revelation this morning than you've already given us. Lord, I pray that you would speak this morning, that, that it wouldn't just be Ben's mouth, but it would be your words. Lord, I pray that you would push me out of the way to say what you want to say this morning. In your name, amen. Stay up here for a second. I really felt like the Lord said this. I'm creating in you to be a worshiper, singing the song, not on the screen, not the words being sung in the song, but on your heart. I'm creating you to be the worshiper, singing a song that's made from your heart that praises my name. It doesn't have to be on the screen. It can be through your heart. And I'm seeing it come forward. He wants to encourage you because he sees something new in you. Maybe you've never known it, but you, you're singing the song and all of a sudden you have new words and you're like, I don't know where these words are coming from. And he's saying, just sing it out. Because it doesn't matter who's to the left or the right of you because he just wants to hear your joyful song. He wants to hear your joyful song. So I just want to pray over you. So Father... As that word comes to us, Lord, I pray that you would encourage us with that. That It wouldn't just be a challenge of becoming something new, becoming something that's, that's different. But Lord, that it would be a welcomed gift. That we would say, Lord, I want to unwrap my heart for you. Because that's what it is. When you, when you allow us to sing the words on our heart to you, we're unwrapping our gift to you. And we're just saying, Lord, have it all. Have it all. Take it all. And Lord, I pray that you would give us the courage and the ability to do that this morning in your name. Amen. Amen. Hey, good morning. Y'all can have a seat. That doesn't happen a lot with me, but I thought I'd share that because right over here, I just felt like the Lord was saying that this morning. And whoo! If you accepted that word in your life, watch out what will happen in this next season because God's going to unveil 
a whole new level of his heart to you. So it's not like there are levels of his heart, but he just shows you new. So, all right. Hey, this morning we're starting a new series. I was, uh, I was praying. I was praying on, when was that? When was that I was praying? Um, when, when was it that this sermon came about? The, the idea of this message came about about 30 minutes to an hour after I received a call saying, hey, we're giving you a full another truck. And so um, light speed is what I've titled this. When I think of light speed, I think of uh, Star Wars. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think of the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, all you see is when they hit light speed, just psh, blurs of lights. So that, that's important. That's important because God, God does something light speed in our life. He does lots of things light speed in our life. We might not always open our eyes to see it. We might not always have the spiritual eyes of our heart open to see it because I don't know about you, but I'm a mess up, right? When life begins, think about this. When life begins and Christ enters in, we accept the light, okay? But Jesus, with light speed, enters in. It's faster than light speed. I can't, even dis- I can't even tell you how fast it is because it's faster than light speed. It's warp speed. It's faster than warp speed. We don't even have words for it. How quickly he enters our heart because it's immediate. Amen. I think it's funny because sometimes our spiritual walk must be a speed of light. But so many times we have things holding us back from entering into response of speed. Amen. In this series, we're going to find out that light brings spiritual vitamins. Living in the light brings spiritual vitamins to our spiritual walk. Amen. We're going to find out that, that light has more benefits than anything outside. Amen. Anything outside. We're going to find out that light has more spiritual benefits than anything outside in our life, whether it's physical or spiritual. Amen. This series has so much in it. I mean, we're going to find out what it means to walk in darkness versus what it means to walk in light. Amen. We're going to find out what it means to carry a flashlight with you, like an old school 1980s flashlight, compared to what it means to walk with a headlamp from today. An LED, 30,000 lumen, that's a lot for a headlamp. <laughs> but we're going to find out what it means to walk with those in the spiritual realm of life. And so I'm really excited about this series, and I just want to dive in to Genesis chapter 1. You know where I'm going to start? The first verse. So if you have your Bibles, great. You read that, didn't you? Didn't you? It's, all, it's all good. I, I love you, honey. Happy Valentine's Day. Hey, happy Valentine's Day. We love you. We love you guys. Will you be my Valentine? Sorry, honey, I've got lots of them. So, um, you had your chance. You had your chance. So, verse one. We're going from funny to serious now. Okay, verse one says this In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty and dark, and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night, and evening passed and morning came, marking the first day. Light is fast. How many of you know that the lights are blinking in this room right now? They're not a consistent thing. Lights are blinking so fast that your naked eye cannot see the darkness show up with these lights because they're pulsing. They're pulsing so fast that they illuminate what's around them. No, they're not breathing. No, they're just pulsing. That's how they're designed. Light does not just show up. Have you ever seen a fire? Does fire flicker? It's the same thing with light bulbs, especially the older ones. The, The new LEDs are so fast. That's why they can use LEDs to light your TV. Because did you know that your screen is actually a film, and it's moving. They go 24 
whatever is how fast our eyes will not notice the, the transition. 24 scenes per second. Per second. Anything less, we're supposed to be able to see it with our eyes. Well, with your light, your light's blinking much faster than that. And it's light speed. How many of you have ever been able to see a light turn on? I mean, it comes on, right? It, you flip the switch and it's on. Unless it's, uh, if it's an LED, it's just on. If it's, uh, uh, what are those long, luminescent, what, fluorescent. See, I don't even know. I'm so young. I just know LEDs. You have fluorescent lights and they're dim at first, but they're on. Right? Especially in the cold. They're dim. They have to warm up. God calls his light out and says, let there be light. And what happens? That's where it gets its speed from. God gives light, says light show up, but speed shows up. He said, let there be light. And immediately the response from light was, I'm here. So often in our spiritual walk, God says, let there be. And we go, are you sure, God? Like, is that really? Is that really what you have? I think it's awesome because God's words are immediate. The light showed up because God's words were immediate. You know, it, it talks about in the Bible about how rocks will cry out if we stop immediately. You, ever, you never put that word with that. If we stop worshiping God, guess what? The rocks outside your house are going to cry out because they need him. Amen. They, the rocks need God to survive. They want to worship the creator. God created the rocks. God created the tree we, we are standing on when we stand in this building. This building is a tree, okay? Yeah. It was. It still is. Leave me alone. <laughs> when fall happens, leaves come in. Um, yeah, it's very true. They come in that door or on our feet. Um, but so often in our own walk, we are not immediate with God. Amen. I told you I'm a mess, right? If, if, if I said that to you today, if I said, are you immediate with God? And you said, yes, I am. Okay, today, right now you might be, but what about yesterday? Yeah. What about six years ago? I didn't know him six years ago. Okay, what about five years ago? I didn't know him five years ago. Four years ago. Okay, I, I, half the time. Okay, so half the time, four years ago, you're immediate with God ever since. Well, no, 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 that's not right. And if you say so, that that is right, you might got a problem with God. Because that's what Scripture says. Anyone who says they are without sin, they are what? Lying? Right? So every one of us are a mess. And that's good. Because there's not a single one of us that has a clean enough room to not allow God in. Yeah. Our rooms are messy. And we say, God, come in. Because he's the cleaner. He's not a maid, but he helps us pick up. Yeah. And that's what's so good. So God's words are immediate. Do we respond to God and his requests as if they are our priority? Mm. I want to say that again. Do we respond to God every time God puts a request out? Do we respond to him like he's our priority? I mean, I, I just want to, I want to read a word because I get it. Like, Ben, the Bible says slow to speak. You know, we think of response as speaking, right? Or let's, so let's read James 1, 19. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must be quick to listen and slow to speak. Oh, there it is. Ben, you're wrong. I got to pray about what my response is going to be to God. But that's not how that works. Because if you read this scripture in context, it goes on, it says, it says, slow to speak and slow to get angry. angry. He's not talking about the relationship you have with him. He's talking about the relationship that you're growing with others. Amen. Now, let me say that a little slower. He's not talking about the relationship we have with him in our response to God. He's talking about the relationship we have with others. How many times have you had a conversation with someone who believes something different and you start to get angry? The best thing you can do in those moments is pull away and allow yourself some time to talk with God. Amen. And this is why. Verse 20. 
Human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word of God, the word God has planted in your hearts. For if it has the power to save, for it has the power to save your souls. When we respond to God, we're responding to something that created us. Someone who created us. He has all the power in the world. He's the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. He is omniscient, right? Did I get that word right? And omnipresent. Amen. He's all of it. He's here right now. Amen. You know why he has to speak in such a quiet voice? Because I think if I heard his, his normal tone, I would be startled most of my life. Mm-hmm. And maybe even deaf. Because he's powerful. He calls on us to respond to him and to respond to others as if we were talking to God. Because you wouldn't just yell at God instantly, would you? I mean, I'm not saying he's, he's, I mean, he can take that. He can take all your anger. But my neighbor might not be able to. Anyone ever been offended in this place? Why are you laughing? That's a good question. You know, as Christians, as Christ followers, Jesus was never offended by those that disagreed with him. He was offended because they were taking the Lord's name in vain. He went into, he went with holy anger. And if you look at that scripture, he went into the temple, saw what they did, and then what'd he do? He walked back out. He went and created a cat of nine. He had plenty of time. I don't know if you know this, but he was raised by a carpenter. And so one of his things, one of his stress relievers was probably making something. Think about that for a second. He was making something. So he walks out, makes something, something that can destroy, cat and nine tails, and he walks back in and he starts flipping tables. Why? Because they were offending not him but the father. He wasn't offended. He, he just knew the father was offended. What offends the father should offend us. But at the same time, what someone does, they don't do knowing they do it. And so what's the prayer that Jesus prays on the cross? Forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Lord, I know that what they're doing. These are people that say they know you. We should be mad at each other, not not the lost. Ever think about that? Spiritual anger goes towards those that know better. Think about that. They're in the temple. They should know better. The priests are selling the half sacrifices. What are you doing? Sorry. I scared my son. That's how you know he listens. That's when he listens. (laughs) But God, God says, hey, the light went immediate. And as people and as high priests... Jesus saw them and said, they're not even listening, God. They're not even, they're not even taking their own message. You know, they said, hey, you have to have a pure sacrifice and sacrifice it. And they sold these half sacrifices, these blemished things. And here we're finding out that his relationship with the disciples was greater and his relationship with the people that were less than these was greater than his relationship with the people that should have known better. How many times in our walk do we go, okay, God, your, your response is light speed, and we look at our neighbors and the people that we fellowship with as perfect, and we get angry at those that don't know? When did Jesus get angry at those that didn't know? When did Jesus ever respond with anger to those he didn't know? This is a little rabbit trail that God is just producing right now. So... When did Jesus ever get angry at the prostitutes, the drunks, the Roman soldiers that beat him? uh, 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 Pilate, thank you. Potiphar was last week. (laughs) Yeah, Pilate, Pilate's wife. When did he ever correct them? No, he said forgive them. Correction can't happen until forgiveness occurs. 
Man, maybe I need to do a sermon on that. Correction, can, you can't correct someone when they don't even understand. Amen. You can't correct someone until they, don't, you know, until they understand forgiveness of their sins. They don't get it. That's why Jesus prayed, forgive them, for they do not understand. They don't get what forgiveness is going to bring. They don't get what is taking place in front of them on the, on the mount, on uh, Golgotha. They don't understand what's happening on Calvary. They don't understand the blood that's flowing from his side and what it's going to do. So he says, hey, Lord, I'm going to go on behalf of them. Amen. He's immediate with his response. Jesus was immediate with his response. Unless it had to do with anger. Then he went away. And he didn't respond immediately. I love that. James 1.22, we're going to get back on track. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Oh. No way. Nope. I got to pray about it. Lord, Lord, you put it in the word of God. I'm going to pray about it. I'm not sure. Do we have to pray about something he's already told us to do? No. Oh, I love that. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourself. I love that. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You may see, you see yourself walk away and forget what you look like. Anyone ever forget what they look like? No, I'm pretty good looking, you know? Like, I used to, every time I'd go shopping with my mom, I'd find the mirror, you know? Like, that's good looking. God, you did good. I didn't know better, you know? Now I know love is in the eye of the beholder. Thank you, thank you, Lola. You know? It's Valentine's Day. She loves me, you know? There's no, I love you, I love you not, you know? It's, I love you, you know? It's wonderful. And, and this is what else it says. Verse 25, but if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free. Do I need to go on? Do we need to go back and look at the perfect law that sets us free? Do we need to go back and look at the word that sets us free? Because when we heard it, our response should have been immediate, but we said, no, God, please hold. A lot of us do that when we read the word. It's like, God, I see it, but I didn't hold. You know, you don't work in a call center for God. But we act like we do. You know, and, and here, here it is. He says this. He says, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will. Bless you. Did I sneeze? <laughs> you know, bless you for doing it. He'll bless you for obeying his word. That's why, that's why I bring up Psalm 119 all the time because it says, I long to be. I'm sorry. What's that word I shouldn't know? Obedient. That should be on the tip of our tongue. Lord, I want to be obedient today. I, I challenge you. I'm not even to the challenge part. I challenge you to pray that every day this week. Lord, help me be obedient to your word. Help me read, see, and do. Help me look at your word and hear your voice and do what you call me to do. Don't let me get confused on what I'm hearing, but let me see it in the Word. Let me be obedient this morning. Help me be obedient through this next 24 hours. And pray it throughout your day. Lord, I know I've messed up. Please forgive me. Help me be obedient this time. Because so often we lose track of that obedience to God. Yeah, th remember I talked about the rocks? Why will they cry out? Because they're obedient. Rocks are obedient compared to us, huh? <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but that rock is way more obedient than I am. I should point back here. See, God commands us to do things. And half the time we sit there and go, please hold. I'll be back to you when I'm ready. But God didn't tell the light let there be light. And the light said, oh, hold on, God. You don't want to go there yet. Do you know about Adam and Eve? Like, no. It just showed up. Yeah. Amen. It was immediate. At God's word, it was immediate. I guess what I'm trying to say this morning is we need to be as obedient as the light. 
We need to be as obedient as, and there's a play on words here, and I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. We need to be as obedient as the sun. The sun will rise in the east every morning, and it'll set in the west. You know who, what else rises? Jesus, the Son of God. And he's obedient. It, it, I told you, this thought, this idea came to me 30 minutes to an hour after I received a phone call saying, hey, we want to give you another truck. She's in Arizona. She's normally in Chicago. She's on vacation. She's on the golf course with her husband, but she's sitting in the golf cart with her computer, and she calls me. This is a, a lady by the name of Bethany. I've never met her in my life. And she's like, hey, we had someone cancel on us. They didn't give away enough boxes. They had to cancel on us. They weren't giving them all away. We want to give you a whole another 1,092 boxes the rest of the month. Before she could even say it, though, she said, we want to give. And I said, yes. She goes, you didn't even hear what I said. I said, I didn't need to. I asked for a couple pallets. I don't care. I want boxes. She goes, what if I would have said 15 trucks? I said, I would have prayed harder. <laughs> One more truck was, was putting me into a worry po position. I was like, Lord, I know. And he said, you remember that you said it would be a miracle if you got rid of 1,092 boxes? I said, yeah. And he goes, how is this any different? <laughs> but it wasn't about my faith after it. That was just a growing point. It was about my faith saying, God, yes, we will take. Yes, Lord, we will hand out. Yes, God, I'm here. I don't want to be waiting on people to finish the question. I want to go now, God. Yes. We, and, and I'm not perfect. I don't do that every time. But this one instant, I said, yes. You know, when she originally called me, she's like, hey, I want to send you 1,092 boxes. I said, can you just send me half? I wanted to say that so bad. But something in me stopped me. I was worried. Like, Lord, 1,092, it's going to take a miracle. Yeah. Oh, but God's bigger than Ben. Amen. It didn't take a miracle. It's a God. Amen. It's not about the miracle. It's about the work. Amen. Even Jesus says that. Says, you guys look at, for the miracle. I'm not asking you to look for the miracle. I'm asking you to be obedient. I'm asking you to be faithful. I could bring up a story about the talents. There was one man who wasn't obedient. He wasn't faithful. You know, they took the money. That was obedient. Two of them invested. One made a lot more. The other one made a little bit more. And the third one put it in the ground. Well, he did a little work, Ben. Yeah, for himself. He was worried. You know? We got to put in the work for the Lord. We can't wait. We can't place God on hold for the the Lord. When he says do, you go, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. There's a scripture that says yes and amen. Yes and amen. Here we are with over $30,000 of food every week. It's over 32,000 pounds of food every week in each truck. You're looking at over 65,000 pounds each week of food. Just because God said, I choose you. Amen. Will you? Oh, yes, Lord. Will, yes. It's, uh, whatever you have for me, God, I'll take. So often God had to finish his question with, with Moses before Moses had the chance to deny him. Think about that. I need you to speak to Pharaoh. Oh, my God, you got the wrong guy. <laughs> Don't let someone else be the Aaron in your life. Don't let someone else be, be the, don't, don't be the Jonah and have the third chance, you know? Be the, be the Noah. When Noah's told, build an ark, he says, okay, God, how big? Be Noah. Be Noah this week. In James 1, 26, it says this. And, and this opens a whole nother, rabbit trail, and I'm going to go there. If you claim to be religious, don't be controlled by your tongue. Okay, I'll read on. You are fooling yourself again. You are fooling yourself. 
and your religion is worthless. Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. You know the hardest thing to let go of in your life is your tongue. My dad told me that once. I didn't believe him. Then I grew up and he shared it with me again and I go, oh, you're, you're right. Because I'm smarter now. But God calls on us to control our tongue. It's almost as if Jesus knew when he walked into the temple that he had to walk out before he even said anything. How many of us would see something that we don't agree with and speak about it in the moment rather than being obedient to God and saying, you know what, I'm going to walk this way. I love those people too much to tell them they're wrong. How many times do we walk into someone who who's, takes the Lord's name in vain and correct them? I love those people too much. Lord, forgive them. I love them too much. Love them. I love them too much, Lord. Those are the people. Our response should not be to correct. And we, we think response is by words, but sometimes response is by action. I didn't have to say yes. I could have just said, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That's not even a word. It's, mm-hmm. It's like a grunt. <laughs> Like, and they would have known what it meant. But they thought of us first because of the action that took place the Monday before. They thought of us first because we fed families. And they didn't even, let's be honest, they didn't even think we could do it. It takes action in Christ to show obedience. There's a scripture that talks about being a resounding gong. You know what that sounds like to me? Okay, I'll do it. Six weeks later, it's still not done. Lord, I'll do it. The truck shows up and we don't have anything ready. Lord, I'll do it. I was supposed to share the gospel with that man, but he still doesn't know about Jesus. Lord, I'll do it. I was supposed to take a food card to somebody and I just didn't do it. Lord, I'll do it. I was supposed to pray with that person, but they're still longing for prayer. Lord, I'll do it. I was supposed to say hi, but I just didn't. Lord, I'll do it. I was supposed to smile, but I said, God, hold. I know them. So often our response is not the way God has called us to be. I'm going to have the band come up. Sometimes our response needs to be light speed for Christ, not just to Christ. Sometimes our response needs to be light speed for the Savior, not just to the Savior. I don't know if y'all know this. This this word hit me like a ton of bricks because when I reviewed the trucks and then I reviewed my life, they didn't look the same all the time. I had to realize that I walk in the road and I walk in the street and I I hear God and I hear Holy Spirit say something. I'm like, oh, someone else, God. But God says, no, I chose you. I picked you out. I picked you. It's It's not about being someone in the faith. It's about being God's in the faith. It's not about being another number. It's about doing what God has called us to do. It's about going deeper, not just in the word, but with the word. It's about going deeper, not just by myself in my closet or in my secret place, but it's about grabbing someone and dragging them along because Jesus wants to tell them. I want to tell you how much I love you, he says to the people. He says, I want to tell you how much I care because you are worth me. You know, he is everything. So when he says you are worth me, he says you are worth everything. I would die on the cross for you, he says. I would take the bullet for you, he says. I would take the pain from you, he says. But you just got to trust me. I'm yours. I'm 
you are mine. Do we put our faith and our response in that? Do we put our entire response in, Lord, I am yours and you are mine. You are mine. Let that sink in. You are mine, God. Jesus, you died on the cross because you are mine. Now let's rejoice because he's not just yours. You're theirs. You know hurting people? You know a savior. Introduce the two. You know people who who are crying out, but they don't know who they're crying to? Introduce the two. You know people who are who are they're filling their life with stuff that that's just trying to fill a void, that's trying to fill a hole. Introduce the two. Jesus is the void filler. He's the one who, who died on the cross to say, I wanna, I wanna fill that emptiness. But it's more than just knowing him. How many of y'all have ever met somebody that was introduced to Jesus and, and it worked for a week? It's about grabbing them and saying, I'm walking with you. God, that's hard. I can tell anybody and everybody about Jesus, but if, unless I'm willing to walk with them, or I know someone who wants to walk with them and lead them and disciple them and care for them, then I will never complete the mission. I've only fought and won one battle. But even wars can be lost with battles won. Holy, Holy Spirit. I'm not a military guy. My dad was. They wouldn't let me come in. Don't ask why. But God calls on us to fight the battle at hand and to fight the next one and the next one and the next one in response to who he is in your life. For him, not to him. Lord, it, I'll do that. Okay, how do I get anything out of this? That's a response to him. A response for him is saying, Lord, I'll do it. Risking everything you have. Taking what you have and saying, you know what? My reputation might be destroyed for telling someone about Jesus, but his reputation is going to be made known. I want to pray with you. I want to challenge you this week. If you know anyone, if you're, if you're a believer, if you're a follower of Christ, then you know anyone who, who has pain in their life. I don't want you to just go up to them and say, Jesus loves you. I want you to walk with me. I don't know how that looks. That's the part you need to pray to God for and, and ask him, how, how do I respond in this situation? How do I share your love in this situation? That's what that is. If you're a follower of Christ, you understand what I'm saying. Because Jesus is saying, I want to touch them. I want them to know me. But I am the one who tells them who I am. You can introduce the two, but he's like, now it's my chance. A friend introduced us. It was on my plate to get to know her. Does that make sense? It was on my plate to pursue her. See, here's the difference. She pursued me too. Jesus is like that. A relationship cannot be one way. It has to be both ways. Introduce the two. Introduce the two. And if you're not a believer, this is what I want to tell you. If you're interested in that relationship, online, if that's you and you're interested in that relationship, I want you to pray a prayer with me. I'm about ready to pray. I want everyone in this building to close your eyes. Heavenly Father, Lord, I want that relationship. I want that void filled. I want to respond light speed to you, for you. Lord, I want to do what you've commanded us to do. I want to take forward this obedience that you have. I want to make my life clean. Lord, I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to come into my heart and save my life. Lord, I ask that you would do that right now. If there's anyone in this room, I want you to find one of the prayer team that will be standing in the back. Find them and just pray with them. Pray with them. Now I want to pray for those that, that maybe your response has been off. I know mine has at times. And so Lord, forgive us for our response being wrong, for it being off and for it being lost. Lost in our own selfish desires. Lord, I pray that you would take our selfish desires and that you would make them your desires. 
Lord, that we would long to be obedient, not just longing, but actually going forward, finding you. Lord, strengthen us. Help us introduce others to you. Help us help them have a relationship with you. Lord, I pray that we would walk alongside them, that we would throw our arms around them, that we would hug them, and that we would embrace them, even though others might not, Lord, that we would because of who you are. Lord, I pray that you would strengthen us. I feel that there's this huge thing happening soon, bigger than we've ever imagined. And Lord, we can't do this without you. So Lord, I pray that you would grow our relationships with you. But Lord, I pray also that as we grow, we would reach out to those we don't know, those that we know that are lost, those that that have no idea who you are. Lord, I pray that we would introduce them. Lord, I pray that you would strengthen us as a church as a family of believers, that we wouldn't just call ourselves family, but we'd have an open door policy where people are more than welcome to join in this family, to do something greater than we ever thought we could. Lord, we don't know what that looks like, and I pray that you would give us insight onto who and how that happens. Thank you, Father, for who you are. Thank you for directing us here this morning. Thank you for giving us a fresh word, a fresh revelation. Lord, thanks for the intimate time of worship. Lord, I want to carry that out of this place. And Lord, I pray that that's a, that's a call on everyone in this room, that they would carry that out of this place, and that as they dig, they look for fresh revelation. As they worship, they get a fresh, intimate worship time. As they pray, they feel the intimacy that you want to have with them. And Lord, that we could all become more obedient in who you are. Thank you, Father, for that word. Thank you for directing us. Thank you for challenging us. Thank you for everything. Lord, I pray over tomorrow. Every single car that goes by, I pray that they would feel your love. I pray that every single box would just have your grace implanted in it. That when they eat the potato, they get the grace of God. When they eat the meatball, they get the grace of God. When they eat a carrot, Lord, whatever is in that box, Lord, if they drink the milk, they get the spirit of life. Lord, I pray that our smiling faces would illuminate your glow and that people would just capture that glow. Lord, if they're sinners, forgive them for they don't know what they do. If they say they're followers, Lord, I pray you would wake them to know what you are to do. And that it wouldn't be just delivering boxes for a feel good, but delivering boxes with the purpose of who you are. Lord, strengthen us today. Strengthen tomorrow. Let your word be ever so clear, Father. Lord, if people hear your word, I pray they would start praising your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We good, Gary? Awesome. Hey, I love you guys. We're going to worship one more song on the way out. So stand with me and let's worship. Place I would rather be. There's no 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 place I would rather be. There's
just today but God we want more tomorrow we want more Tuesday we want more Wednesday we want more Thursday Friday and Saturday Lord Jesus we want you so God I just pray that you would continue purifying refining us God fill us up to overflowing Jesus name and everyone said amen amen, amen.